A car is traveling at a rate of 45 feet per second when the brakes are applied. And now we're given the position function. And with this information, how long will it take for the car to make a complete stop? So what would you do to solve this problem? Feel free to, to pause the video if you want to try it yourself. So here we have an object that's moving. It's moving to the right at some initial velocity. Now this car, which I drew as a box, just to keep things simple, it's decelerating. The brakes are applied. So there's a force slowing it down, which means it has a negative acceleration or an acceleration that is opposite to the direction of motion. And eventually it's going to come to a stop. What we need to know is that when the car stops, the velocity is zero. What we need to do in part A is we need to figure out how long it's going to take from, how long it's going to take to move from position A to position B. Now, once we have that, we can move on to part B, where we can calculate the stop and distance of the car during this period. So that's going to be the distance between points A and B. But first, how can we calculate the time? Well, right now, we're given the position function. We need to find the velocity function and set it equal to zero and then solve for t. The instantaneous velocity function can be calculated or determined by taking the derivative of the position function. The derivative of t squared is 2t. The derivative of 45t, or rather just t, is 1. So the derivative of 45t is simply 45. The derivative of a constant is 0. So we get this expression for the instantaneous velocity function. It's a negative 15t plus 45. So we want to calculate the time it takes for v to go to 0. So we're going to replace the velocity with 0, and we're going to solve for t. Adding 15t to both sides gives us this expression. Next, we could divide both sides by 15. So t is 45 over 15, which is 3. Now, what is the unit of t? And what is the unit of s? Notice that in this problem, we were given the initial velocity of the car, which is 45 feet per second. That tells us that s, the position, is in feet and t is in seconds. So we have the answer to part A, t is equal to 3 seconds. Now let's use that to calculate the answer for part B, the stop and distance of the car during this period. Now in order to calculate the stop and distance, we need to calculate the displacement. The displacement is the difference between the final position and the initial position. Now during the first 3 seconds, the car is not going to change direction. The only time the car will change direction is when the velocity is zero. And the velocity becomes zero at t equals three. So during the first three seconds, the car is moving in one direction, but it's slowing down to a stop. Whenever an object is moving in one direction, the displacement is the same as the distance. The only time these two things are different is if the car or the object changes direction. But in the first three seconds, since it's moving in one direction, displacement will be the same as distance. So I want you to understand that. So to calculate the displacement during the first three seconds, it's going to be s of 3 minus s of 0. So let's calculate s of 3. Let's plug in 3 into the position function. So this is going to be negative 7.5 times 3 squared plus 45 times 3 plus 300. 
Now, if we plug in zero, we'll have this. Three hundred minus three hundred, that's going to cancel to zero. Three squared is nine, and negative seven point five times nine. That's negative 67.5. 45 times 3, that's 135. And this part is 0. So we just have this now. Negative 67.5 plus 135 is positive 67.5. And the displacement is going to be in feet. So that is the displacement of the vehicle during the first three seconds. Since it's not changing direction in those three seconds, that's going to be the distance that it travels, which is also the stop and distance of the car during that period. So that's how you can calculate it using calculus if you're given the position function.